of all, you will agree that we are witness to a momentous shift of sands. The slow but sure movement of power from the west to east, what we just called the global south, I believe. The term that connotes those countries of Asia, Africa, and Latin America who are now seeing themselves finally emerge on the, glo on the global stage and are gradually becoming stakeholders and not merely spectators in determining their own fates and affecting the rest of the world. The end of the Cold War for many of us meant the rise of a new order, a new order in which the United States was the undisputed leader and with expectations of security and a more harmonious world with it. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Rather, after a short interlude, we saw the images of a multicentric world appear. This was and remains a critical instructive development when multipolarity leads to multilateral action among the key powers that shape the world. That's where we hope new seeds of a better world order would appear. Now, what led to all of this, to the emergence so quickly of a new order, to the global south rising, to us thinking differently, not in terms of the, the values that the West set for us? It was because of the wars that the West launched in the rest of the world, especially in the Muslim world. The war on terror, the invasions, the illegal invasions, the very same countries that were responsible for the stewardship of the liberal order of the world violated those very principles on which it was built. Whether it was internationalism, humanitarianism, or uh, indeed sustainable development, let alone liberalism and all that. So this practice of illiberalism by the champions of liberalism is a study without a doubt in hypocrisy. This in me has brought about tremendous change in thinking and in the practice of politics, unfortunately, as we see today. In the name of national interest, powers are allowed to step over everything, humans, values, properties, and lives. And perhaps this is the hypocrisy in all of that that led with the speed that we saw to the rise of the global south and the multipolar world with the momentum and the capitalization of it as we see now and the opportunities that this provides to us on the international level and of course at regional levels as well. With several centers of power emerging, China, Russia, India, Brazil, Turkey, and South Africa. As natural leaders in this emerging world order, it behoves, I hope it also becomes imperative in lots of ways for these countries to work cooperatively, then in competition. The difference between this emerging new order and the old one should be in the fact that this order should be cooperative rather than in competition, rather than one against the other, rather than causing conflicts. This is what we hope will be the, the uh, motto, the principles on which the new world order will be based on. We also must be mindful as this order begins to emerge, responsibility comes with it too. The new powers, I hope, will recognize 
that the emerging centers of power also need to be careful about how they function themselves into the workings of the world and how they relate themselves to the uh, rest of the world. That, that this connectivity, this new aura of multi-centers or this multi-centric world uh, work together and with the rest of the world in harmony, in real multilateralism, rather than, uh, let's call it, national, national interest centrism, if I can use that word. National interest centrism is what got us into the trouble that we are in. Let's go beyond this national interest centrism. For Turkey, uh, a close brother of ours, in view of the past and its present, and the fact that it's a connecting bridge between the East and the West, or the Islam and the rest of the world, I think of no better country that can lead us by example of massive culture, of history, of um, all that, that we uh, can aspire to. And I hope that the countries of this region will put aside differences, if any, to work, to, to serve for the progress and common good of all. America's stated objective of defeating terrorism did not happen. It faltered. The consequences of that failure are tragic for the Afghan people. Massive human loss. 17 years on, every day we have people killed. Just yesterday we had 26 people killed in eastern Afghanistan in an election rally. And the consequences of that, not only of, of the Afghan people losing lives daily on a massive scale, but also the rise, the further rise of terrorism and extremism and extremist groups. Who is doing all of this? Who is it that plans attacks on parades? And only in our part of the world. And only in our part of the world. And look at the attack, the effort to weaken Turkish economy, the attack on the Turkish leader. Who is doing it? Surely there is a foreign hand trying to weaken Turkish leader. And I am witness to this in Afghanistan as well. That is the template that defines the US policy towards the rest of the world, especially our part of the world, the third world, or the developing world, or now the global south. Chaos and more chaos. Let us band together to shape this new world order. Let's create a new geopolitics of cooperation rather than competition. And let us hope that the United States and some of its allies will cooperate with this new order and not compete with it. And let us ask, too, the rising South, see to it that we don't go ahead in competition with the former world or the older world or the old world order. Let's, let's be wiser on all fronts and let's get it, in, get it right for the rest of us in this world. <laughs>